Hi everybody, this is David with David's Tutorials and today I'm going to tell you how to make three really yummy snacks. And the cool thing is, we have a surprise about these snacks. Stay tuned. If you're like most people, there are times when you just got to have a snack. You get the munchies and you want to eat something. I'm the same way. Everybody's the same way. You just got to have a snack. So, when we're on the prowl for something to eat, most people, they generally go for something packaged. You know why? Because it's easy. They want something they can grab, not have to fix it, just grab it and eat it, and yum, they're done. The problem is, most of these snacks are loaded with carbohydrates. Now, I was going to tell you about the surprise at the end of these, but when I got to thinking about it and thinking about the ingredients in these snacks, I remembered that it's going to take some explanation of why I'm doing it this way. So I'm going to have to tell you the surprise up front. The surprise is every single one of these three snacks I'm going to tell you about is low carb, ketogenic friendly. Now, if you don't think this is important, then you need to do some research on the internet. But the bottom line is, if you eat snacks and food that are loaded with carbohydrates, basically sugars, starches, grains, potatoes, that sort of thing, you're going to overload your system with glucose. Your glucose is going to provide an insulin reaction in your system, and you're going to come up with all sorts of bad results because of this overload of insulin in your system and many other reasons as well. But we're going to leave that for another video perhaps even another channel. But these snacks I'm going to tell you about right now are very low carb and they're ketogenic friendly. So let's go on with the snacks. The first snack up on this yummy hip parade is peanut butter celery. Now don't roll your eyes. I know we all have had ants on a log or other form of peanut butter celery when we were kids. You might remember ants on a log as you just take a stalk of celery, you fill the trough with peanut butter, you put raisins on top of the peanut butter, and presto, you've got ants on a log. Kids love this sort of thing, but the problem is raisins are jam-packed with sugar. And it's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just personally, I want to minimize all of the sugar in my diet. And there's good reasons for that. You can ask me about it in the comments below. I could make another video if there's some demand for that but I'm going to leave the raisins off. The next thing is most peanut butter is just totally loaded with sugar. If you look at the ingredients on a standard peanut butter jar, you're going to see the first ingredient is peanuts and the second ingredient is sugar or some form of sugar such as high fructose corn syrup. Don't get me started on that. But we want to avoid normal peanut butter. So you'll see that in this recipe, I use natural peanut butter. I look at the label on the peanut butter jar, and if it says anything other than peanuts or salt, I have to think twice whether it's something I want to buy. My current favorite brand is Smucker's Natural. Smucker's Natural has only the ingredients that I think is fine in it. Now, one of the things about natural peanut butter is it doesn't have preservatives in it. On the plus side, this is good for our health, it's good for our bodies. On the minus side, what that means is the oil will separate from the peanut butter itself while it sits on the shelf. So what you need to do when you open up this jar of peanut butter, you need to dig into it with a spoon very carefully. You don't want the oil to slosh over the side. That makes a big mess. You don't want to have to clean that up. But you need to dig into it with a spoon and stir it very gently until the oil gets mixed back in with the peanut butter. This is one of the things that makes it less easy than just digging in a sugared peanut butter jar and smearing that on what you need to use. It's much healthier, and to me, it's worth the effort to stir up the natural peanut butter the first time you open the jar than it is for me to put all of the preservatives into my system. Once we have it all stirred up, if you use it every day, stirring it up is only a very small task. It only has to be done once as a chore. To make this recipe, it's not just peanut butter on the celery. The cool thing is you mix peanut butter with butter. Now all of us know butter is really yummy on its own. And if people will tell you, oh, butter is no good, it's full of fat they're wrong. Fat is good for you, especially if it's healthy fat, like butter from grass-fed cows, like avocados, like coconut. You want to keep all of the artificial things out of your system. You want to eat the natural things. Olive oil is a good fat. I use Kerrygold brand butter, and I get it at Walmart. I mean, they carry it there. Thank you, Walmart, for carrying Kerrygold butter. It's grass-fed. It's from Ireland. 
and that's what I use. I leave it out on the counter until it gets soft. And by the way, there's a really cool way to get butter soft besides just leaving it on the counter. You can see a link down in the description below. I've got videos that I've made on how to soften butter in the microwave. If you're late and you need some soft butter and all the butter you have is in your refrigerator and it's rock hard and ice cold, there's a way within about a minute to make your butter nice and soft and easily spreadable. Yum, yum. Or you can put it in a butter belt. And down in the description below, I have another link to a video I've made on how to use a butter bell and exactly what one is. So, what I do when I make my peanut butter celery, I use more butter than peanut butter. It's more than 50% butter, probably as much as two parts butter to one part peanut butter. I put those into a small bowl or a pudding cup is what I like to use. And then I add just a little bit of extra something in there. What I like to do is add sweet leaf stevia chocolate flavored sweetener to this mixture. Not much, just a dropper full, maybe a dropper and a half full of this liquid stevia sweetener to this butter and peanut butter mixture. And you would not believe how good that is. Just put it all in the pudding cup. Take your spoon and very gently, you don't want to slosh it over the side, again, you don't want to make a mess, and mix it up until the butter, peanut butter, stevia, chocolate mixture is nice and smooth. Then all you have to do is take anywhere from six to a dozen cleaned and washed stalks of celery, maybe half stalks of celery, and dip the celery into that butter peanut butter mixture. It's a yummy mixture. It's going to be thinner than if you wanted to spread it on bread, because if you put it on bread as thick as you wanted to and then ate it, then it would scoot out the sides, whereas regular peanut butter is not quite that thin. But for dipping, it's exactly the right texture. Now that is snack number one. It is really good. I use it sometimes to replace desserts after a meal. It fills me up, it tastes good, and I am not hungry after I eat that celery. Okay, the next snack up on the Tasty Hit Parade is cheese skins. I can see you right now, you're saying, cheese skins? What are cheese skins? I haven't seen those in the grocery store. Well, no, you won't see them in the grocery store. And the reason is they're low carb. Grocery stores don't like to stock low carb. Let me give you a quick preview on what carbohydrates do. Carbohydrates produce a glucose rush in your system, produces an insulin rush that affects your leptin. Leptin is your hunger hormone. Have you ever noticed when you eat a snack like Cheetos or potato chips or any of these snacks, cookies that are loaded with sugar, you eat the snack and you say, yum, 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 that was good. Five minutes later, man, I could sure use some more of those. You're hungry again. Why? You've just eaten something. You should not be hungry. The reason is you have not satisfied the hunger. You have triggered your insulin and leptin, and it's making you hungry and want to eat more. Now, all these great big companies that love to sell you things and get your money, they love for you to be hungry after you eat their snacks, so you'll eat more of their snacks and buy more of their product. Okay, this snack that I'm about to tell you about, cheese skins, comes from when I went to a party a couple of months ago, a gathering of some sort, and they were serving snacks out there, and they had vegetable tray, and that was good because I love eating off a of vegetable tray, but they had cookies, I ignored that. They had fresh fruit, which is good and it's healthy, but it's also full of fructose, and they had other snacks like potato chips, and they had cheese doodles, I think they were Cheetos, either baked or fried or something. Now, back when I was loading myself with carbohydrates every day, I absolutely loved Cheetos. I loved the fried ones, they were crunchy, they were tasty. See, they were good. They satisfied me for about five minutes. And I would keep Cheetos in the cabinet regularly. More than a year ago when I got on my ketogenic diet, I stopped eating carbohydrates, which means I stopped eating Cheetos. Did I miss them? Well, yeah, a little bit, but it wasn't as bad as you'd think. But I got to thinking when I was at this gathering, I looked at this tray, it had Cheetos on it or cheese doodles or whatever you want to call them. And I said, you know, those are really good and I liked them a lot, but I don't want to eat those things because they're loaded with carbohydrates. And I started thinking about it and cheese doodles or Cheetos or any of these other cheese crunchy snacks 
What they are made of is cheese powder coating a crunchy core, right? So I'm thinking, you know, if you took one of these things and you sucked all the cheese powder off of it and all you're left with is that little crunchy thing, you eat that crunchy thing, it's pretty much tasteless. Well, maybe I can buy my own cheese powder because I know cheese is very low in carbohydrates and if I can find another very low carbohydrate crunchy core that I could put the cheese powder on, I'd have my own version of cheese doodles and it would be yummy and it would be carb friendly. Okay, so I got to thinking about that and I said, well, what have we got that we can put cheese powder on that's crunchy? Pork rinds, pork skins. Yes, I like those anyway. I eat them. I didn't eat them a lot because, well, they're filling. You, you eat a handful and yeah, they're good, but you don't need more than a handful. And a half an hour later, you're still not hungry. Hey, there's a clue in there. Now, what you want to do, you get these pork rinds and you get your cheese powder. I went on Amazon and I browsed and I checked out all the various bags and bottles and containers of cheese powder they had for sale. And I found one. It was about a pound and a half bag and it was somewhere between $10 and $20. I've got a link to it in the description down below. You can see what I got and if you like it, you can go ahead and get it too. And so I bought that and I bought one of these great big tubs, you know, the giant tubs of pork rinds from the big box store with Sam's and I had about half of that tub left and so I started taking these pork rinds and coating with the cheese powder and by the time I finished up this tub coating the pork rinds with cheese powder I don't think I used five percent of that bag of cheese so it doesn't use very much cheese. Pork rinds have zero carbohydrates the cheese powder has I think two grams of carbohydrates per teaspoon. I don't think I've used maybe two teaspoons on the entire half tub of pork rinds. So the way I did this, I'd take a handful of these pork rinds, I would put them into a plastic container about oh four or five inches square and six, eight inches tall. spoonful of this cheese powder, put one or two little spoonfuls on top of that. And then I would take this container and I would tumble it in my hands. I would turn it up and upside down, right side up and turn it some more just so the cheese powder and the pork rinds fall all over the inside and the powder gets all over the pork skins. When that's all done, I can kind of see through the plastic. I see that the pork rinds are all covered with cheese powder. I'd open it up. I tried getting it out with my hands, but I get the cheese powder all over my hands. I tried it with a spoon, but it would pick up some of the loose cheese powder. So I finally found, let's use tong. And I would go inside the container with the tongs. And I'd take out the pork rinds and put them in a bowl, take the bowl in the next room and sit down. Because I'm, not, I'm not eating all these cheese skins. And I'll tell you what, they taste better than commercial cheese doodles or Cheetos. The reason is, the Cheetos and the cheese doodles and all that, they are made out of a tasteless core. Pork skins are not a tasteless core. You only want to use plain pork skins because I've tried this with the flavored pork skins, the salt and vinegar, the salt and pepper, the barbecue pork skins, and all of these added flavors, they interfere with the flavor of the cheese. So I much prefer making cheese skins out of plain pork rinds. That's snack number two. That is cheese skins, and you try it. I bet you find it every bit as yummy as I did. On to the next snack. Okay, the final snack in this yummy snack parade, amazing cheese chips. I wish I could say I thought of this, but I didn't. My wife is also on the ketogenic diet and she follows all these keto people on the internet. And somebody else suggested this and we tried it and it is absolutely wonderful. And it's one of the simplest snacks I have ever made in my entire life. All you gotta do is take one slice of cheese, Put it in the microwave on normal power for one minute. Boom, you're done. You've got an amazing snack, but there's more to it. Let me tell you some of the details of how we do this. First of all, when you microwave cheese for one minute, it kind of overcooks it, it toasts it, it bubbles up, it turns dark. This is exactly what you want. However, when it does that, it exudes a lot of the oil out of the cheese. So what I found, so that I don't have to wind up spending a lot of time cleaning up a mess in the microwave, first thing I do is I take one of these half-sized paper towels, I'll fold it in half, 
I'll put that in the microwave. I'll take a piece of parchment paper, oh, maybe eight or 10 inches square. I'll put that up on top of the paper towels. I put the cheese on top of the parchment paper. That whole shebang goes into the microwave. One minute, boom. The parchment paper catches most of the exuded oils. Anything that leaks through the parchment paper or goes off the side is usually absorbed by the paper towel. So the microwave is much cleaner when you're done. Next thing is, as soon as you get it out of the microwave, don't eat it, it's too hot, you're gonna burn your mouth. Take it out of the microwave, put it on the counter. salt it. Put just a little sprinkling of salt on there. You're going to have to try it a few times and find out how much salt is right for you. But it also, it just perks up the flavor of this thing really nicely. After you salt it, you need to let it sit for 30 seconds to a minute. Even two minutes is fine. It's fine to eat it while it's warm. You don't want to eat it while it's hot. You don't want to burn your mouth and you don't want to pick it up and have it still sag because it's soft when it's really hot. This is really good. So that's the third snack on this yummy hit parade, cheese chips. And they are just so good, you'll wonder how you ever did without them. The good thing about all these snacks, they're low carb, they're very healthy, they're ketogenic friendly, and you're gonna thank me for it. Try all these snacks. Let me know in the comments down below how you liked them. Try your variations on them. For example, on the cheese chips, my favorite kind of cheese chip is the sharp cheddar. The reason for that is with sharp cheddar, you get the most cheese flavor for the least amount of cheese. I've tried it with mild cheddar. I've tried it with medium cheddar. I've tried it with provolone. I've tried it with American cheese. I've tried it with Swiss cheese. They all work and they're all good. My favorite is the sharp cheddar. What's your favorite? That's it for this video, everyone. Don't forget to give us a big old thumbs up if you thought this video was helpful. Click on the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified whenever we post another great tutorial here on David's Tutorials. See you in the next video.